everyone, and welcome to the Circuit Ricardo Tormo here in Valencia in Spain. Port city of Valencia, we're just on the uh, southeastern coast of Spain, almost overlooking the Balearic Isles of Ibiza, Menorca, and Mallorca. And this extraordinary circuit, Ricardo Tormo, is ready to play host to race two for Ferrari Challenge Copa Shell. It's on its way. Expect the brilliant battles between the Shell drivers and the Shell and drivers to uh, really enhance our afternoon as we saw Ingvar Mads celebrating there as. Only he can. Hello uh, from Nico and Dave. Welcome. And uh, this is Copa Shell Race 2, then, as we uh, promised you. And glorious sunshine, unlike the weather conditions yesterday, which was nice and warm, but uh, with showers as well. There's been none of that during the course of the day today. Therefore, the track is bone dry and offers the uh, perfect uh, landscape uh, to um, race these 488 Challenge Evos on. We are the fourth round. Uh, slam in the middle of the season now here in Valencia. From here, we head off to the Nürburgring in Germany, uh, then spa Francorchamps, and of course the uh, World Finals, the Finale Mondiale to come in November in Mugello in Tuscany. What a backdrop this is. And there you can see the three Balearic Islands that I was talking about that you can almost see from the uh, coast here in uh, Valencia. Wouldn't want to swim it. It's uh, quite a distance, to be honest with you, but uh, that's precisely where we are. And uh, this circuit, of course, named after the uh, two-time motorcycle Grand Prix uh, champion, Ricardo Tormo, is quite a challenge for our drivers. There's a heck of a difference between sector one and sector three. Uh, they are point and squirt sectors. And uh, sector two, though, is altogether more difficult. It's uh, really rather technical. 14 turns, nine left, five right-handers. And there, that uh, camera angle showed us exactly that middle sector. We're on board the James Wyland car as we look at the uh, weather conditions. Air temperature 28 degrees, track temperature is 32 degrees. If you fancy a fried egg, then uh, the tarmac is the place to do that. Wind has increased to about 10 kilometers per hour, which has just taken the edge off the uh, temperature, to be honest, as we look at this fantastic grid of cars. To the left-hand side is Joachim Olander as we uh, walk down the grid now with one of our RF cameras. And uh, you can show you these uh, fantastic cars and drivers uh, ready to go racing. To the left-hand side of the grid is Ingvar Matson. To the right-hand side, it looks like Alex Fox, I hope so. And then uh, we have the uh, rows ahead, including Christian Kinch and uh, James Wyland. And going from the front row of the grid, it will be Fon Skeltemar and Axel Sardigan show you some of the highlights that we've experienced in the weekend so far. have of course been truly thrilled to allow a limited number of spectators into the circuit Ricardo Tormo. Uh, most of them are seemingly for one of our Trofeo Pirelli drivers Sergio Paolo who of course comes from Madrid just up the road and boy his support has really buoyed him Nico. Yeah definitely a very very good race for him. The win eluded him this time uh, courtesy of Christian Brunsburg taking P1 twice but he certainly did put a great show for his fans and these copper shell drivers now are going to follow suit there is no question about that it's a 30 minute race shell and shell M classes and they have been hugely entertaining yesterday in particular the man who won yesterday Ernst Kirschmeier in down in P8 um, that's not something that he will want to stand. He will be one very much on the move. The irony is that uh, following yesterday's race, Ernst Kirschmeyer, as you said, victorious. He goes from uh, uh, P8 on the grid, not where we would expect to see him. Uh, Willem van der Form, um, I'm led to believe the engine wasn't up to where he needed it to be during qualifying. So he's qualified out of position as well. He's going from P3 within class, but actually P9 overall. So. We're already expecting and anticipating some overtaking for an, a number of drivers, aren't we? And Ernst Kirschmeyer, for sure, uh, he's tr 
trajectory is only going to be one way and that's going to be forward we know that he can overtake and certainly that is going to be the case this afternoon probably from both of those drivers so there are some of our spectators let's uh, check out how the big character axel sartingen is feeling ahead of the start of this race he goes from p1 Axel Sartigan, a new pole position, second pole position, a new season today, sun, summertime and slick tires. Yes, you're absolutely right. Now we have slick tires, totally different conditions than since yesterday. So hopefully it went better, it will went better than uh, yesterday. And uh, yeah, it will be very hot inside the car, so we will heat up. And uh, let's see how the race goes. So all the, all the best, yeah. I figure it should be us that's offering you all the best, Axel. Our job is relatively easy in comparison to yours. But nonetheless, uh, we appreciate the sentiment and the kindness. Now, there is Ingvar Matson, who returned to the Ferrari Challenge and was on the podium yesterday. <laughs> Forgive me laughing, but Ingvar, another one of those big characters who promised faithfully if he got to the podium, he would do his famous dance, which he did. <laughs> Take over because I can't cope with him. <laughs> <laughs> giving giving us a wave is Ingvar. He obviously a former Copper Shell world champion, returning here in Valencia for the first time this season and has shown that he has brought from zero a very rich vein of form, has Ingvar Matsen. There is von Skeltema, the, the man with the drive of the day yesterday. Without question. Without question. Uh, he was exceptional. Uh, the fight uh, that he put up in terms of trying to uh, win this race uh, was awesome. An incredible job from Fons Geldemar. Some of the best driving I've seen from Fons, and I actually told him that as well, as he and Ernst Kirschmeyer, both hugely respectful of each other, and however close and tight that fight got, it was always fair. Yeah, definitely. And Ernst was leading the race quite comfortably. Fons was involved in all sorts of battles, and... At some point, with about six or seven minutes remaining, he got the hurry up and overtook three other cars and made it all the way to the back bumper of Ernst Kirschmeyer, but ran out of laps and out of time to complete the sweep. And he's now in P2. He doesn't have to make all those many overtakes, but he has to make one and make it count. And Axel Sartingen, who said he still has ambitions for the overall championship, will have very different ideas. So that's going to be interesting. We just saw a shot on board with uh, Lisa Clark, who, of course, is here from the USA this weekend. And uh, she was on the podium in uh, Homestead, Miami, just last weekend. And uh, she's hoping for good things during the course of the race here. A very welcome addition to our European uh, grid is the Ferrari of Beverly Hills driver, Lisa Clark. Uh, also, uh, USA, uh, or from the USA, is one Mr. James Wyland, who goes from uh, P3 on the grid. And, of course, uh, from a championship point of view, because James has competed in all of the European rounds, a very strong position. But, of course, there are others chasing and catching and uh, taking points away from him. Definitely. And Ernst Kirschmeier, who we already mentioned, he took over the lead and mm. he is now leading the championship. Now, from P8, P6 in class, that means everybody else who has ambitions will feel this is an opportunity with Kirschmeier buried down the grid by his standards to maybe make up some ground. That this man, first podium yesterday, great, great driving in the wet. Now, will it be the same in the dry? We will find out in less than a minute. We will get away on our formation lap. Claudio Garavini, our race controller, then our race director, saying we have just one minute to the start of the uh, formation lap. So all the engineers, the camera crews, and everybody else that is uh, ancillary uh, leaves the grid because the only people we need are the drivers in those cars uh, ready to do a battle. So uh, we are going to uh, prepare ourselves for the start of this 30-minute race to come. And wherever you are, wherever you're watching us, hold on to your hats. It's going to be a good one. safety car as the cars are released on their formation lap and here comes the grid in full for you von Skeltemar and Axel Sardigan are on the first row of the grid it's Axel Sardigan pole position going from P3 it's James Wyland alongside him is Christian Kinch then on the third row of the grid we find Ingvar Madsen the best of the AM drivers and Alex Fox a shell driver is alongside him then it's Joachim Olander and Ernst Kirschmeyer occupying row 4 P7 and 8 respectively 
Willem van der Vorm and Josef Schumacher going from uh, row five of the grid. And on row six, we find Giuseppe Romelli and Paolo Scudieri. Uh, they are both AM drivers. On the seventh row, it's P13 for Werner Genter and P14 for Tommy Lindroth with Martinus Richter and Maurizio Pittori going from P15 and P16. Uh, Peter Christensen did a very good job yesterday. He goes from P17. Guy Four is alongside, ahead of uh, Lisa Clark and Germana Tonyella, who are P19 and P20. So the cars then making their way around this track on the formation lap and uh, altogether different conditions to those that they experienced yesterday. And uh, they will meet up with the uh, Richard Mills safety car. They will line up side by side in grid formation. Axel Sardigan and Von Skeltemar on the first row of the grid. They will control the pace of the rolling start. And uh, then 30 minutes of race action to come from Ferrari Challenge. Copa Shell will be underway. Track conditions, I'm tempted to say almost perfect. That is, unless you're strapped into a 4A Challenge Evo car, it's going to be hot. Yeah, definitely. And remember, these are not professional race drivers, very ambitious. Um, but 30 minutes inside those sardine cans, which they are not, they are high, these sophisticated machines, but they will feel like a sauna in just a few minutes time. And um, that is a tough 30 minute race and you will see it and they will no doubt feel it, um, but they are ready and they will try to extract the very best out of their cars and out of themselves in the 30 minutes ahead. All the social media was at the bottom of the left-hand side of the screen for you. We'd love to be you to be part of the uh, Ferrari family. Uh, at Ferrari Races is the uh, hashtag you need as uh, the cars do grid up side by side. This long sweeping turn 13, which leads into turn 14. Safety car will peel off into the pit lane. Stand by. We are about to go racing. Lights go out, Axel Sardinger gets a very good start. I think he gets the jump on Von Skeldemar. Von Skeldemar on the outside. Keep your eyes on James Wyland and also Christian Kinch right behind. Von Skeldemar dives to the inside of Axel Sardinger. If he can make the move stick, but he carried too much speed. That plays into the hands of James Wyland, who picks up the lead of the race. P1 for James Wyland, as that looks like Alex Fox spinning across the grass. He is going to be collected. And I think he was collected by Axel Sardinger. Christian Kinch, the big beneficiary, he's gone through. I suspect that we will probably see a safety car. But Christian Kinch is P1, Von Skeltemar P2. Good avoidance from everybody else. Ernst Kirschmeyer is uh, P4. So there is our race leader, Christian Kinch. So Von Skeltemar diving to the inside. Yes, it was Alex Fox. And sure enough, there is a safety car. Well, the integral safety of these 488 Challenge Evo cars and of course, the way the circuit is designed, the reason for gravel traps and old school gravel traps is it slows the car down. And good to see that Alex Fox has got his door open. He'll be out of the car. Regrettably, there's Axel Sardinger, but he's also out of the car as well. Truthfully, Axel's had a weekend to forget. Yeah, definitely not what he hoped for and certainly not representative of his speed. And he looks a bit dejected. And yeah. I mean, fortunately for Alex Fox and everybody else involved, he slid across the grass, didn't lose a lot of uh, his velocity there. Um, Axel starting and saw him sliding in, which is very difficult because you're uh, focusing on your race. Yeah. Which is, I mean, we have a very different vantage point and fortunately not a lot of speed there but it did damage the car and it's race over for both Alex Fox and Axel starting and very sad start for the race and end for the race for those two so Andrea you can see there in the Rosso Corsa uh, pit garage and uh, Christian Kinch uh, leading the race from Fonts Skeldemar James Wyland Ernst Kirschmeyer here we can see it again let's pick the bones out of this so initially, Axel Sardinger gets a brilliant start, but then Von Skeltemar seems to get second wind, Nico. And in the second phase of the start, he's got extraordinary pace. James Wyland was very consistent. That's where Fons dived to the inside of Axel Sardinger, carried uh, so much speed. James Wyland goes through. And uh, Alex Fox here, ah, uh, contact with Fons. And it was really, really disadvantageous. There was absolutely nowhere Axel Sardinger could go, Nico. Yeah, absolutely. No, ch no chance for him to take avoiding action. He did well around here. Noticed that he ran out of road, went wide, and then, you know, 
there is a car from back. He was well to pick up that there was a car coming sliding. And look at this. Look. And great, a great shot from being on board with James Wyland, who luckily managed to avoid. But poor Axel Sardigan. Um, I mean, look, the car actually, when you're on the grass, it just accelerates, doesn't it? Yeah, there is no stopping it. And I mean, he's really taking the shortcut and unfortunately directly into the racing line of Axel Sardigan. And there is Christian Brunsburg, um, our winner in the uh, Trofeo Pirelli Am. I mean, it's just a case of wrong place, wrong yeah, time for him. And no, but also, I think from von Skeltema's point of view, oh, he was sure. trying to find racing room. No harm uh, intended and uh, just a racing incident also from his point of view. And they're uh, discussing that, Alex Fox and Axel Sardigan. Uh, great shame because they're both great racing drivers and they are out of the race. And it was just a, an unfortunate uh, set of circumstances. But thankfully, both of them are perfectly OK. So now we're in the safety car phase where the cars have got to be recovered, of course, from a safety point of view. And uh, so actually, if you are a racing driver and that happens, it's a blooming nightmare, isn't it? Because you've, you've, all the adrenaline has driven you from the start of the race. And then all of a sudden, it's, you know, you've got to calm down again and almost reset yourself because effectively it is going to be a restart. The cars will not be side by side. Uh, they, of course, will be uh, one after the other. The incident involving Von Skeltemeyer and Alex Fox is under investigation. I would be very, very surprised if any action was taken over that, because I think, Nico, you've called that exactly correctly. I think it was a racing incident. It was just one of those things. Yeah, I, I tend to agree now. Uh, Claudio Garavini in race control will have more vantage points to look at that, um, and he will, together with his team, make the right call. In the Ams meanwhile, Joachim Olander has managed to get into P1 in class, overtaking Uwe Matzen. Josef Schumacher went up into P3. Uh, Willem van der P4, Giuseppe Romelli, Maurizio Pittori. Now, obviously, gaps non-existent. Everybody bunched up. And once we go back to racing, that, I think, will be a very, very intense battle in the AM for uh, pride of place and position. I'm sorry to say, I don't think the recovery of those two cars is going to be necessarily the work of a moment. We may have another couple of laps behind the safety car. Um, as we speak, Nico uh, hangs himself almost off the balcony of our uh, commentary studio to ascertain how they get on with the recovery operation. And as is typical of Nico, who's German, he'll doubtless offer them some advice on how best to do it. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're doing just fine. I got me towel down first. Right. Um, Nick Christie and Kinch uh, is in the lead of the uh, Shell drivers and Joachim Oland of the Ann drivers. That's it. I'm walking back to the hotel, I think. My rental car will be impounded now. Um, Christian Kinch, Von Skeltemar, James Weiland, Ernst Kirschmeyer ahead of Joachim Olander for the Ann drivers, Ingvar Matz and Josef Schumacher and Willem van der Boer. Shut up, Dave. You're going to be in all sorts of trouble. Uh, of course, what the drivers will need to do is try and maintain some temperature. I, I, it sounds really stupid, but actually, even with the ambient temperature that we've got here, it's still critical for the drivers to try and keep temperature into the Pirelli tyres. How do they do that? You'll see some weaving from side to side. You'll see others, like Ernst Kirschmeyer there, will accelerate and will then break because the energy you put through the braking system, the heat that comes out of the brake discs and the calipers just dissipates through the rims and onto the tires. So it allows those tires to absorb that temperature and keep to a degree uh, closer to their uh, operating, uh, operating temperature. Uh, lights still flashing on the safety car. We're on board with Lisa Clark now, and Lisa Clark running in uh, P12 within class ahead of uh, Germana Tonella. And that is one of our best onboard camera positions, in my opinion. You can really uh, see uh, the driver hard at work inside the uh, 488 Challenge Evo car. Extraordinarily good uh, racing car. So, safety car is coming in at the conclusion of this lap. So the recovery team have done a brilliant job. Fair play to uh, all the marshals and all the teams here at the circuit as well, because without them, we wouldn't be able to enjoy this fantastic sport of ours. Yeah, absolutely. It's so great to have the fans back, but you know, without the marshals and all the team here around the track, there is no way we could follow the sport we love. Now, for the drivers, it's refocusing from keeping the tires up to temperature, now refocusing on the actual racing. And Kirschmeyer, he probably the biggest beneficiary in all of this, yes. went all the way up to P4, and he's got all the other three cars in front of him, basically in striking distance. So from his point of view, that couldn't have gone a lot better You're right. in terms of positioning. And it's sometimes in situations like that, you just have to take advantage of the cards, how they're dealt in front of you. And 
That's precisely what he did. Good avoidance by a number of cars as well, though, including the likes of James Wyland. But uh, let's focus on what we're going to get now because we get the uh, restart of this race underway. Christian Kitsch leads from Von Skeldemar and James Wyland and Ernst Kirschmeyer. So uh, Von Skeldemar doing a good job of anticipating when uh, Christian Kinch was going to give it 100% on the loud pedal. So it's Kinch from Skeltemar, Wyland, then it is Ernst Kirschmeyer. It's Olander, Mats and Schumacher and Willem van der Form in uh, the AM drivers. And uh, there we can see the uh, 182 car of uh, Willem van der Form. So Von Skeltemar goes through. And uh, thankfully, the uh, safety car restart has all gone terribly well, uh, which isn't always the case because uh, safety cars uh, do sometimes breed further safety cars. Now, this is uh, latest news. Drive-through penalty for car number 177, Von Skeltemar, for causing a collision. So Von Skeltemar picks up a drive-through penalty. As you said, Nico, they have uh, much more available to us in terms of data and camera angles to look at as well. They have deemed Von Skeltemar was responsible for that. He picks up a drive-through penalty. That has completely horlicked his race. Yeah, no question about that. I'm sure he will disagree, but uh, race control do their jobs as we try to do ours, and the drivers try to do theirs, and um, obviously very unfortunate for Fons, but it will mix up what will happen. Now, obviously, Christian Kinch, as long as Fons is there, he will try and get up the road, and James Wyland will hope for Fons Skeltema to get into the pits as quickly as possible for him to be released and un until that point he will try to overtake but probably not overdo it either. Did Fons pull in? Yes he does. So that is good news for James Wyland. He has got the hurry up now and he's got his target side firmly set on Christian Kinch. He's got his uh, targets firmly, firmly lit up on that Christian Kinch car. You're absolutely right. Von Skeldemar is coming through the pit lane now then. His drive-through penalty, he will be utterly livid, of course. But, you know, once you've got a drive-through penalty, you've only got three laps within which you've got to take that, having been notified. He's chosen to come in early and take it. That's a very sensible thing to do because, you know, there could be another safety car. There could be all sorts of things that go on, and he would be in a better position then, having served that drive-through penalty, to make his way up the order. Absolutely. He will have an absolutely empty track because everybody's bunched up. So until he catches up with the end of the crocodile he will have an empty track he can set sector after sector the way he wants and you never know what happens we never know what happens we had christian brunsberg come to p2 from all the way back on uh, through the entire grid so it's not out of the realm of possibility as ingvar matson tries to put the pressure on joachim olander this is for p1 in the m class and this is for pm uh, for p1 in the shell Yes, this is P, James Wyland, who is two. <laughs> At the moment, James Wyland then running after Christian Kinch. So Christian Kinch, may I remind you, who's celebrated his first victory in the Ferrari Challenge this season after some 10 years of competing in it. Uh, his racecraft has improved and improved and improved and he's a fine driver now. So too is James Wyland. Uh, certainly very, very fair. And you can see the pace that James Wyland has got underneath him in that Rosso Corsa engineered car. He is right on the gearbox and look who's coming calling in uh, P3. It is a uh, one Mr. E. Kirschmeyer from Austria. And we know how lively he can be. He needs a target site in front of him and he's got that in the uh, James Wyland and Christian Kinch cars. So Christian Kinch carries a lot of speed through there. James Wyland had to yield. Ernst Kirschmeyer is right on the back of them. Almost three abreast we go into turn number two and truthfully that number of cars going through turn number two would never have worked. Great, firm, fierce fight. Fraught, I'll give you that, between these three now in the uh, lead of the race and that's what they all want. But Christian Kinch holds on to that P1 position but he is going to come under enormous pressure from both James Wyland and Ernst Kirschmeyer. Probably the driver with the most responsibility here in his own head is James Wyland because he's hunting, but being hunted at the same time is the 488 meet in the Ferrari sandwich here. <laughs> Absolutely, and for Ernst Kirschmeyer, he will feel like he wants to get past Wyland as quickly as he can because the more he takes the fight to Wyland, that will slow both of them down and allow Kinch to get up the road. So for Kinch, he would love those two to fight for laps and laps up on end and get up the road. But oh, as Ingvar Madsen takes a little bit too much of the curb and runs wide, I think he was able to control it, but he did lose quite a little space there. Yes, he did. He was on the grass, wasn't he, at one point. You could see the dust being kicked up. But I have to say, Christian Kinch doing a good job here defending from uh, James Wyland. 
Uh, but the battle intensifies while unto the inside of Christian Kinch now through turn number 14. Now, trying to get underneath him is Christian Kinch and is successful in doing that. James Wyland with an unorthodox line through turn 14. It didn't work for him. We're on board with James Wyland now. He lost so much speed going through that turn that Christian Kinch was just able to put a little more string, steering trajectory on and go through underneath him. Yeah, definitely. Didn't quite look like Wyland had the line he wanted to. Looked like the car was unsettled a little bit and therefore he went deeper into the turn that he wanted to. And that obviously makes him vulnerable to Ernst Kirschmeier behind him. Now, it didn't, nothing, no harm done for him here, but certainly Kirschmeier is on his uh, tail once again, and Ingvar Madsen has closed the gap in the inter-sweet battle with Joachim Olander. <laughs> behind them, it is Willem van der Worm who has overtaken Josef Schumacher. Um, there you can see them come in too short, and Willem van der Worm comes here with a s strong sense of form. Uh, three wins in a row. Can he make it four? It's still 16 minutes remaining for him to do that. Van der Vorm on form. You're going to get welted for that, friend. Um, so there is the 182 car then, who, as you say, is in a podium place at the moment. B3 uh, chasing down these two, Joachim Olander and Ingvar Madsen. Car number 199 exceeding the track limits. Car number 126 exceeding the track limits. The rules with regards to track limits are here. You get four... Uh, no, you get three warnings. On the fourth warning, you get a drive. Uh, you get a five-second time penalty. If you get any warnings over four, you're going for a drive-through. It's being re um, it's being delivered with a rod of iron from race control in terms of uh, trying to get a slingshot through uh, places you really shouldn't. And if you make the track wider than it is delineated, then you're going to get your knuckles wrapped. Tell you what, Christian Kinch, fair play here, Nico. The pressure that came initially from James Wyland and also Ernst Kirschmeyer has gone away. Yeah, he's really stretched his legs. He's increased his lead to three quarters of a second and almost the same distance back from Wyland to Kirschmeyer. Now, I'm sure that is only temporary. Uh, there will be movement in that, and um, Wyland will hope to get back onto Kinch. But once two of those get together, that opens up the opportunities for the third. And, Going three abreast through that oh, turn, no problem. <laughs> Giuseppe Romelli giving us a lesson there in how to drive sideways. He was on the inside and uh, he controlled it uh, beautifully, to be fair. The uh, Pelin Racing uh, engineer Giuseppe Romelli having to use opposite lock to uh, control that uh, sliding car. So, a uh, great battle going on here, and Giuseppe Romelli, of course, trying to get to the inside of Joseph Schumacher. Uh, but he's got Paolo Scudieri up his trumpet, and also Werner Genter, and Martinus Richter, and Peter Christensen, and Tommy Lindroth, and they're all queuing up, to be honest. So, there is uh, Joachim Olander, there is Ingvar Madsen. Willem van der Vorm is steadfast in P3. He's got uh, uh, quite a bit of gap to try and close so that he can get on this battle with Ingvar Madsen and Joachim Olander. There you can see him in the all red car that is just into shot there. But the trouble is, Nico, with that safety car, I've just looked at the clock. We've got less than 14 minutes of this race left. Yeah, definitely. Um, but that means for all the drivers, they have to really focus and be on it. We're getting the final warning already for one of our drivers. That's the car 199. Um, and that is Ingvar Madsen, who is P2 in the AMS. Now, that is pressure because with near on 14 minutes remaining, you cannot not put a wheel wrong. And that pressure may tell, and there is all sorts of, and there is Giuseppe Romelli slowing he's got down. Problems. He's got problems, hasn't he? So he's pulled to the outside of the track because he's got an issue. Uh, Paolo Scudieri was the first of those to go through. Werner Genta with an ambitious move on the inside of there. I think that was uh, uh, Maurizio Puttori. Uh, but there is the 197 car of uh, uh, the Eberline Automotive, Automobile. Automotive, automobile driver, um, Josef Schumacher. Now, where is that car? Has he managed to get that into a safety road and onto a safety road? The reason I'm asking this question is because what we don't want is another safety car. Yeah, definitely. I think he's been very sensible. He just was, when the problem occurred, he was just past the pedentary, yeah, which would have typical, solved the problem. It? But I think he just kept it straight and ran all the way. And, they and the uh, track helpers can push the car out of the danger zone. Now, Willem van der Worm, we said, he is ma he's making up ground almost Almost gained a second uh, on the last lap wow. as we take another look at that. And not, mm. not quite sure if that was enough to, to damage the car. Um, but you know, sometimes it's the innocuous things that really have a lasting effect as we go back to the leaders of the race. Right. 
forgive me. Christian Kinch doing a good job here as James Wyland is now, now, forgive me, interrupting myself. The track limit time penalty has come into effect for Ingvar Matson. That's enough to put Willem van der Boom into P2 as we stand. Definitely, but I mean, he will try and go for P1 and Joachim Oland, but there is still obviously the car in the way, and there is Josef Schumacher on very, very interesting uh, routes off the track. Sightseeing going on there. Not even sure where that is on the circuit. Um, flower beds and everything. Um, you were saying about Christian Kinch. He's just soaking this up. And James Wyland and Ernst Kirschmann, I just think Christian Kinch has got so much pace that he's controlling this really, really well. Well, this was Josef Schumacher. I think that was going round on his own. I don't think there was a touch there. So he clatters through the gravel and then ends up, as you say, in the flower bed somewhere. <laughs> wow, well, there could have been a touch, you know. It's very difficult to see from that camera. Um, but thankfully, he had the presence of mind to get the car onto uh, that grass and uh, uh, astro strip and was able to uh, get the car into a position of safety to avoid us having to have another safety car. Ingvar Matson then gets a uh, time penalty of five seconds, as we said. Basically, you get uh, three warnings. Fourth warning, time penalty. Now, if he does it again, he's got a trip through the pit lane. And as we saw with von Skeltema, that royally ruins your race. Now, Completely. with the five-second penalty, um, that still means he still has a chance for a podium. So he yes. will not definitely not let up. So when Willem van der Boom comes locking, there is no way that Ingwer will just say, yeah, you go by, I've got of a penalty. Not. Of course He not. needs every hundredth of a second that he can gain over Maurizio Pittori. Right now, provisionally, he is P4, but it is very much in the realm of possibility for that gap to change significantly enough. Well, we will see over the evolution of the next 10 minutes whether that happens. Now, I think part of the reason that Christian Kinch has been able to get away here, Nico, and build a gap of 1.279 seconds is the fact that James Weiland is very conscious of the fact that he's got Ernst Kirschmeyer right behind him. So James Weiland and Ernst Kirschmeyer, who are fighting for P1 in the Drivers' Championship at the moment, uh, P2 and P3, you can see Ernst Kirschmeyer is beginning just to take a look at where James Wyland is perhaps vulnerable. Um, and this is just playing into the hands of Christian Kinch. Boy, it will be a uh, Sweden celebration if he, uh, if he is able to uh, take another win this season and to do it here in uh, Valencia as well. Uh, Ronnie Kessel, team principal of Kessel Racing, looking on. Of course, it was David Fuminelli you could see alongside him, who is driver coach too. Um, von Skeltemar, who, may I say, following the drive-through penalty, has made it up to P5 in class. However, he has exceeded the track limits at turn one in so doing. Well, he's already visited the pit lane, but he certainly doesn't want to do that again. No. Um, the advantage he has, he can really, uh, he doesn't have to defend too much, no. so he can look after his tires, and that may be beneficial come the end of the race because. This is a very technical track, as you've said before, and so once the tires start to go off, it becomes oh so difficult to even keep it on the track. And when the uh, additional threat of a penalty is looming, oh. it cannot be a good feeling. No, you're right. I think Ernst Kirschmeyer now is going to try for an attack on James Wyland. I think he's used the last two laps as sighting laps to see where he thinks his best chances are. Uh, but putting one on James Wyland in terms of an overtake. I could be wrong, but he's just been advantaged by James running wide on the exit of that turn, and that allows Ernst Kirschmeyer to go through on the inside. Truthfully, it was a guilt edge invitation that was offered to Ernst, and he didn't even need the invitation. He was going to gate crash the party, but he's through now anyway. So, Ernst Kirschmeyer moves up into P2. James Wyland, P3. Now with, what have we got, eight minutes remaining the gap between Kinch and Kirschmeyer is two seconds. Game on, I would say. <laughs> that definitely the opinion that Ernst Kirschmeyer has. And team principal Philip Barron, former be. multiple champion, he will be screaming into his ears, metaphorically kicking his bottom, saying, come on, Ernst. It's either a W or you walk home to the airport. Yes. Don't, bar, don't care. No, he's not He's not that bad of a headmaster, but he is certainly going to give his driver a motivational speech of sorts. <laughs> yeah, there's no question about that. Uh, Maurizio Pittori has been warned about track limits, and so too has car 101, uh, which is the car of uh, Paolo Scudieri. This in replay, then, 
To be honest, it was a mistake from James, and that allowed Ernst Kirschmeyer to go through, and uh, he has picked up that place. And there you can see Franz, Ernst Kirschmeyer's engineer, wearing his Ray-Bans in the middle of the uh, in the middle of the uh, picture there, who uh, was really, really very happy uh, with how. Ernst uh, just took advantage of that situation that he had. So, James Wyland, though, is fighting back. That's good to see. Not going to take this lying down because he knows that it was uh, it was his error, and uh, therefore he wants this P2 back. The fight in the Drivers' Championship is between these two. Now, with regards to the AMs, where are we? Joachim Olander, Ingvar Matson, and Willem van der Form. That's the order on track. However, Ingvar Matson has got the... Uh, the uh, threat of, well, it's not a threat, it's a promise of a five second time penalty to come. And at the moment, uh, does that mean Ingvar will be able to secure P3? Has he got enough of an advantage over Maurizio Pettori? No, right now Maurizio Pettori would take that P3 position. However, Ingvar Madsen, who had been a little bit slower than both uh, Olander and Willem van der Worm over the last few laps, he picked up the pace and has closed this gap that we're seeing now. Come back onto Joachim Olander, and there is the Willem van der Worm car, the red car with the yellow. Um, AWS sticker. Absolutely. That's the word you were looking for. Exactly. <laughs> and he certainly has those two in his target sites. Now, Willem will know that it's not all about the win. It is about collecting points. But Maurizio Pittori, forgive me interrupting you so rudely, has just been given his final warning about track limits. So that means... How um, much more drama can we take? <laughs> quite a lot more, but that obviously means Ingvar Madsen, who will have that news also from his team. But, 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 Willem uh, is certainly not going to just rest on the laurels of the time penalty. He's going to have a go here at the uh, Madsen car, isn't he? And he tries to take the slingshot further around and then pick up more speed onto the straight. I'm not sure if it has worked here, but we've seen time and time again that the overtakes into turn one have been set up through turn 13 of the previous lap. And Absolutely. I think that's exactly what Willem van der Worm tried here. He certainly has closed the gap a little bit in the slipstream. Not close enough to do something about it here, but he may find an unorthodox space to try and overtake. Well, we will see. Now, Igvar Matson then on track, then he's P2. But bear in mind, he's got a five-second time penalty, which will be awarded at the end of the race, which means uh, Willem van der Borm cannot get on terms with Joachim Olander because despite the five-second time penalty, it doesn't mean that Ingvar Matson's going to get out of the way. Uh, you can bet your bottom dollar on that. And, of course, what he doesn't want to do is make himself uh, vulnerable to Maurizio Pittori by getting caught up with this battle with Ingvar, who actually is something of a cork in a bottle given that time penalty that he's got. Definitely, and there you can see Von Skeltema, who is really, really, and you can see fastest, fastest lap. lap. Um, I mean, he has the pace in the car. We saw that yesterday, we saw it in qualifying. He will be bitterly disappointed about that incident. So whether he believes it was his fault or not is kind of academic. He will feel that moment ruined his race. Um, but he's not giving up. He is trying everything, and he's only two spots behind Guy Four, who is fourth in class, so he may still have that in his target sights. In his target sights of James Wyland is Ernst Kirschmann. So Maurizio Pittori has got closer to the back end of Willem van der Vorm now because Willem's been focusing and targeting the, uh, uh, the Ingvar Madsen car ahead of him. So Kinch, Kirschmeyer, Wyland. Then you can see there Willem takes a completely different line to Ingvar Madsen and just tries to get the slingshot to the inside of Ingvar Madsen. I don't think He's quite close enough to be able to do it. It's all beautiful new news for Joachim Olander, who's just on his own, isn't he? And has got sufficient of a cushion, but we are running out of laps here. We've only got three minutes left, so... Oh, as Willem really tries to get on the back of Ingvar Matson now, looks at the inside. Matson takes a different line as well. Ingvar will be well aware of the fact that he's got a time penalty, but what this is doing is actually not helping Ingvar because he's slowing because of the battle that he's in. And there is Willem van der Vorm who tries, has a look, has to back out of it, but that was close. And as you said, Maurizio Pittori is just on his back, and so he really has to be mindful not to lose his position in an attempt to gain a position. Whoa, and now on the inside, and that was, to be fair, to be fair, that was a bold move by Pittori that wasn't really, that wasn't really on. As if that wasn't enough drama, Willem van der Vorm has exceeded the track limit at Turn 1, trying to get past Ingvar Matson. Now that, to my knowledge, is his first warning. 
So he'd have to be jolly unlucky to pick up another three in the space of the two minutes that we've got left in the race. But in fairness, that was nothing other than a racing incident. I mean, uh, Pittori was going for a gap, but I don't think was really on. Absolutely. And still, Willem van der Boom gave him racing room. And it was just sure. the moment that the two touched. The cars are so light on the... Um, uh, in the turn and on yep. the curb, so every little touch and momentum change gets you spun around very quickly. Now, Font, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, Christian Kinch is still in the lead, but Ernst Kirschmeier is reducing that. It's only 1.2 seconds. It's only two more laps as we take another look at that move. Well, there was yeah. sufficient racing room left. I think actually the Pretori car was sliding. I think he was, you, do you know what I mean? He was just trying to hold on to the car. I really do think that. I mean, there was no turn in whatsoever uh, from the 182 car. So, I just, I, I don't know what more can be thrown at this race at the moment. Well, <laughs> Ernst Kirschmeier has just reduced the deficit uh, to Christian Kinch to less than a second. Oh, oh, so if on. you want to have more drama, look no further than this battle. Ernst Kirschmeier is going to go. Christian Kinch, before he got his first win, said, I have to beat Kirschmeier if I want to have it. And he did there. Will he make it too? And he has, if he does, he has to hold up Ernst Kirschmeier, and that would be richly deserved. There you can see Wyland sliding a little bit. His tie is certainly not up to par with his competitors anymore. I should think not. These drivers have taken just about all the rubber there is off of those tires. So it's Kinch, Kirschmeier, Wyland. Sounds like a pop group, doesn't it? Uh, they are P1, P2, and P3. And uh, in the AMS, it's uh, Joachim Olander, Ingvar Madsen, Willem van der Bormel. Although that's not the order it will be, uh, because Ingvar Madsen has got a five second time penalty. Sorry to keep reminding you of that, but it is critical as uh, the cars head towards the uh, timing line now. They'll break the timing beam as uh, that's precisely what Christian Kinch does and uh, Ernst Kirschmeier and James Wyland as they start the final lap of this extraordinary Copa Shell Race 2 here in Valencia. What can Kirschmeier do? Truthfully, Nico, if he is able to close that gap on Christian Kinch, I will willingly buy him a glass of lemonade because I don't think he's going to be able to do it. Willem van der Boom is not happy being behind Ingvar Madsen, goes to the inside. He will carry surely too much speed. Was that guy four? I think that was guy four. He'd gone past Willem van der Boom just a little bit. He obviously in a different class. So I think Guy Four was trying to go past Madsen, which does not concern the Swede. Uh, they are very, very, diff uh, very, very similar liveries. Oh. Um, and yeah, it was Guy Four who's moved himself up to fifth overall. But that's out of class, so it doesn't matter. One thing that doesn't matter in this race, there are so many <laughs> things that do. And you know, James Wilder is trying to claw himself back in the end scratch. My, I do believe it may be too little, too late now. But it's never over until it is over. We await the fat lady to sing, apparently. Uh, that's what we say in the UK. It's not over until the fat lady sings. Well, for Christian Kinch, he just is counting the turns down, how many more he's got. But I have to be honest, I think that what he's got in that car is awesome because neither Kirschmeyer nor Wyland really have been able to take this to Christian Kinch, who has got one more turn to do. And it will be to celebrate his second victory of the season as Christian Kinch heads towards the timing beam. He'll break it and he'll get the checkered flag. Kinch wins from Kirschmeyer and from Wyland. And here now comes Joachim Olander. This is for the AMS. It's going to be Joachim Olander then, who really hasn't had too much trouble. He goes through to take the checkered flag. Next will be Ingvar Matson, but Ingvar Matson has got a penalty to come. That will drop him out. So it's Willem van der Voorm that takes P2, and Paolo Scudieri does take P3. I'm going for a lie down. Oh. Make room, I need some space too. As we see, <laughs> Christensen and Lindroth <laughs> across the line. Stefano Guy there, I believe, that was walking out from the garage, congratulating his driver, Christian Kinch. It took him 10 years to take his first win. It took him just four more races yes. and seven weeks to <laughs> replicate that feat. Great driving from our Copper Shell driver. Sad that Alex Fox and Axel Starting were eliminated from the race this early, or it would have been much, even more drama. There is Philip Ballon, Baron, the aforementioned. He doesn't look that unhappy, given that his driver didn't take P1, but only 
P2. And Franz was there to, uh, of course, uh, Franz is the engineer for Ernst Kirschmeyer, and you can see Franz there uh, with uh, Philip Barron as well. So Kinch, Kirschmeyer, Weiland, Olander, Vanderborn, Scudieri. An extraordinary race. Absolutely, absolutely great entertainment. Fair, fair driving amongst all of them. Um, wow, I mean, <laughs> great driving. Joachim Olander, who was so, so very quick at the beginning of the year, and he dominated in Spielberg, taking two P1s, has been a little bit unlucky recently, including yesterday. Yes. Um, where he collided with the barrier. So for him to come back and take another P1 is very, very good and very richly deserved. That drive was very, very consistent, and he didn't yield to the pressure behind him. Um, Ingvar Madsen, he was the only one who went to penalties eventually. Um, but you see, again, the penalties. I mean, uh, to be fair to race control, and we should mention Spanish uh, competition GT driver Miguel Molina, who's been in race control as a driver advisor all weekend long. You know what? Um, every driver was told during the driver's briefings, this is the way it's going to be. You know, so all have had fair warning, haven't they? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's hard to control the car when your tire deg is such that you know you're you're trying to put it uh, put it in the right place. You know, um, you steer it in the right direction and just hope that you're going to hold on and not run foul of the track limits. But whoa, what a race! Definitely great entertainment. It's Kinch from Kirschmeyer, Weiland, Guy Four and von Skeldemer waded all the way up to, to P6 overall. They're the top three on screen for you. It's Olanda, Willem van der Voen, Paolo Scudieri, and then Ingvar Madsen, who lost out on that podium by four tenths of a second. So, oh, in, spite tough, of the ten, in spite of the penalty, he was really, really close to the music eventually. Yeah. Hopefully, he will come back and take that as a motivation to come back and dominate again. <laughs> are, you, are you happy, Mr. C. Kinch, as uh, Babalu says? I'm so proud of you. <laughs> well, Christian, you can buy your own. No, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> you can buy us a drink. <laughs> so there's Franz and Philip Barron then, who are really rather hounding. Um, <laughs> or uh, Skirschmeyer. All I want to do is get out of the blooming car. <laughs> and uh, Joachim Olander. Well done. Well done indeed. Kirschmeyer is okay for a lift back to the airport, isn't he? And uh, Willem van der Boom, uh, takes uh, P2. Good. And uh, that should uh, that should uh, help his points haul, there's no doubt about it. James Weiland there. If anything, looked a little bit disappointed and dejected. If it well, it is a tough race, and... Uh, <laughs> I, I would look very much more dejected and tired after too. <laughs> emerging from that car. No disappointment, no dejection visible here. Well, we will have a look at some of the great images and give us a minute of rest. Christian Kinch, the winner of race two in Valencia. Second victory for you. An amazing day, I think. Thank you. Thank you so much. I said really early in the season that the one track I was looking forward to was Valencia. I took a third place yesterday, and today I claimed my first victory here. It was super good. I had very good start, and I had luck in the start. But then I managed to really hold back Weyland and Kirschmeyer. Grande! Grande! I think he might be quite chipper. 
I'm honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe too chipper. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Right, so we will be talking to the um, Coco Shell and the winner as well, Yoko Olander. Um, we're just trying to find him at the moment. <laughs> I'm told. <laughs> RF camera going up and down the pit lane. Oh, where's he gone? Here he is. And now you are the winner of race two. Yeah. I'm so, so, so happy, extremely happy. Uh, I had a good days in, in Spielberg uh, and I was really, really struggling in Bruno. Uh, I never been to, to Valencia before, uh, so I was not sure about the track yesterday with the rain and so on. Uh, and I pushed a little bit too much the yesterday race. Uh, today uh, I learned the track more and more uh, and I'm so 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 happy and it's it's uh, really beautiful and, and uh, happy today. Thank you Joachim Olander, richly deserved. Here come the highlights now, enjoy. taken on some uh, lemonade um, and we can tell you the race statistics are as follows uh, 18 laps in total and a total kilometers 72.1 the total overtakes 23 <laughs> for Copa Shell, uh, 40 for Copa Shell am best progress in each class guy for who went up 13 places and Peter Christensen who went up six interestingly the uh, fastest lap uh, in Copa Shell am came from Paolo Scudieri and for Copa Shell it came from Von Skelsmar no surprise there following his drive-through penalty he'd got the right hurry up hadn't he uh, so um, those are the uh, race statistics for you of course we have the podium to come in fact, we have two podiums, one for uh, Copa Shell and one for Copa Shell. And we'll see the top three in each class and we'll head up to the podium uh, next. Here we go. James Whelan. So to step three of the uh, Copa Shell podium comes uh, James Wyland. And Skirtsmeyer. P2 for Ernst Kirschmeyer. Don't be surprised if he doesn't Kirch. jump up onto the step. Here comes the uh, race winner, Christian Kitsch. Where are you? <laughs> Looked like he was needed a wheelbarrow to get him out there. Here comes the national anthem.
mismo es el momento de levantar los trofeos. Arriba los trofeos. So in this James please would you hold your trophies Christian. up? And uh, that's what they do. Christian Kinch, Ernst Kirschmer, and James Wyland. Christian Kinch's second win of the season. And here are the cars that uh, put them where they are on the podium, and you can sense the grumpiness from James Wyland, who he'll be, do you know what it'll be? He'll be really cross if he made a mistake. That's what it will be. Probably, yeah. But I mean, still good points for him in the championship. Yeah. And he is really, really driving with his mind. And Jens Kirschmeier is also doing that, but it's also driving with a lot of heart in the tendency. And the threat of uh, his headmaster, <laughs> Philip Barron. So B2 for Ernst Kirschmeier. And like buses, you wait 10 years for one, and then two come at the same time. We're talking about wins metaphorically, of course. Uh, buses metaphorically, but the wins are not metaphorical. They are two now for Christie and Ginch, and they've both come in this season. Well done, sir. Next up, we will be having the AM podium, where we will be seeing Joachim Olander, uh, Willem van der Form, and Paolo Scudieri. First of all, Drivers' Championship points, then Ernst Kirschmeier, uh, two points ahead of James Wyland on 96, and Christine Kinch now P3 in the points. On 76, he's six ahead of Von Skeltema, who's relegated to P4 in the points. So here comes the uh, Copa Shell AM podium, uh, and we will see Paolo Scudieri on the third step. Willem van der Form will be on the second step of the podium. And on the top side, it's Joachim Olander. Olander. To say, I like our uh, circuit presenter here. He's got all the energy we need. Brilliant stuff. Escuchamos en honor del vencedor, nuevamente, el himno de Suecia. Applause, if you will, please, and hold up your trophies. And, uh, well done, our Copa Shell Am drivers then celebrating on the podium. Here are the cars then. P3 for Paolo Scudieri. B2 for Willem van der Form. Good points hauled for the Scuderia Monte Carlo driver. And uh, B1 for the Scuderia Rotoropa driver, Joachim Olanda. Martin Nelson will be jolly happy with that. Definitely great day for Sweden with uh, Joachim Olander and Christian Kinch enjoying the sweet success. Oh dear. So Willem van der Voorm on 90 points, Joachim Olander on 71. He moves up a place and Giuseppe Romelli drops a place to 63 points, P3, and then Paolo Scudieri. Uh, he now is P4 in the points with Tommy Lindroth, P5. Uh, the rest of the uh, Drivers' Championship points there you can see on uh, page two. Well done to all our drivers and thanks to all our drivers for providing some awesome entertainment uh, across the uh, uh, Copa Shell races. Uh, we will be heading off to the next round, which is in uh, this extraordinary Nürburgring circuit, which is an absolute uh, delight to be at in the uh, Eiffel under the sights of the Nürburgring Castle, which I will not be visiting, I can assure you of that. They don't like heights, you know, and it's pretty high up there. So, uh, Nürburgring is where we head to next. Then, of course, we're off to Spa, Frankelschamp in Belgium. And then, goodness me, it's the World Finals. Finale Mondiale in Mugello in November, Nico.
Yep, lots of fights, lots of castles to visit all around those three venues. <laughs> and we will bring you the races live from those castles. Indeed we will. Indeed we will. <laughs> Providing we've not been fired by then, which does remain always a possibility, of course. Uh, thank you so much for being with us here at the Circuit Ricardo Tormo in Valencia. Bye-bye for now.